Hi everyone, this is May Park. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today I'm going to show you how to use the images from different stem sets to create a custom background. This video also shows how to use a floral frame die to add a dimension and interest on your project using the inlay die cut technique. Of course, I'll share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my messy desk after my project is done. When it comes to mixing images from different stem sets, it's important to choose the stems which have a similar illustration style or similar thickness of the outline images. For today's project, I'm going to use these two stem sets from Pink Press Studio, Sweet Treats, and Happy Everything. Then I'll be also using the floral frame die with a swan die set to add a dimension on my project using inlay die cut technique. Actually, I was going to do some color layering by stamping both solid and outline images in different colors. So I picked some color combinations and test out the stamping on a scratch paper. I even cut some of my stamps to customize the images. But I don't know why, I just felt like coloring, so I decided to use only outline images for coloring. I already cut my panel to 4 and a quarter inch by 5.5 inches out of Nina Solo White 110 pound cardstock. You can stamp the images directly on the A2 size top folding white card base if you want to. I placed my panel inside my mini misty stamping tool. Then I'm starting to arrange my stamps on my panel. If your images are small, it doesn't matter where you stamp first. So I'm going to start stamping from the center and toward the edge of my panel. Once I'm happy with the placement of my stamps, I'm going to ink up the stamps with alternate permanent black ink. Then I'm closing the misty door to stamp the images onto my panel. Since I'm going to color my images with coping markers, I'm using alcohol marker friendly black ink for stamping. If you prefer less intense black outlines, I recommend you use the Memento Tuxedo black ink. To avoid any identical pattern, I'm rotating the direction of my stamps and I try not to have the same images next to each other. It's also important to keep the same distance between each image to achieve a balanced background. Today I'm using the misty stamping tool as it allows me to do double stamping in case I don't get a nice impression on my first stamping. This tool also helps me stamp several images at once to save my time. If you don't have this tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or stamp press. I'm a big fan of stamping with small images for creating my own background. Many of my crafty friends say coloring is therapeutic, but I found that stamping makes me more relaxing for some reason. How about you? Once my stamping is done, I'm going to dry the stamped panel with my heat tool to make sure I don't get my ink smudged while coloring. Now I'm going to color my images with coping markers. This is my collection of coping markers and I store them in a plastic container which has two slots. Last month, I bought 20 more coping markers and updated my copy color chart. I was so glad that my coping marker collection was growing but I couldn't find the time to play with my copies until today. I'm not going to do any blending or shading, but simple coloring to enhance the simplicity of my floral images. You can add shading on your images to create some dimension if you want to. When it comes to choosing colors for stamping or coloring, I try not to go with a traditional color combo for flowers. For today's card, I'm using yellow, pink, and green. And I'm adding blue to create my color combination interesting.
can stop coloring here if you want to. Just color your images and leave the background as is. Or you can add some dots using your colored markers to fill in the gaps between each image. But I decided to color my background with a coping marker E70 Ash Rose to create a vintage look of my floral pattern background. I wasn't sure how my background coloring would turn out. To be honest, I almost cried because the color I chose didn't seem right. And the background coloring left some splotch areas which looked so messy. Anyway, I decided to keep coloring until I complete my entire background. To hide my splotch areas, I'm going to add some dots using the same coping marker E70. I'm still on the fence about my finished background. Do you like my colored background? Now it's time to do some die cutting. I'm going to die cut the floral frame twice using the floral frame with a swan die set. I'm placing my floral frame die and my colored background panel between cutting plates. Then I'll be running them through my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. I'm going to die cut one more floral frame out of white foam foam. If you don't have a white foam foam, you can die cut several frames out of white cardstock and stack them together to make it thick. Next, I'm mounting the negative part of my colored panel on the A2 size white top folding card base using a glue tape. After attaching two die cut frames using a liquid glue, I'm going to inlay my die cut frame on the opening of my panel to add dimension. Now it's time to open my sentiment. I'm just pulling out some of the sentiment banners from the container full of my sentiment leftovers. Then I place each of them temporarily on my card front to decide type of font, size, and color of my sentiment. I'm going to pull out sentiment stamps from various stamp sets. While the supplies are out on my desk, I just wanted to stamp extra sentiments for future projects. I'm prepping a piece of lagoon cardstock with anti-static powder bag to remove any moisture, static, and oils. This step helps prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. Then I'll be inking up my stamps with embossing ink and stamp them on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some Hero Arts white detail embossing powder of the sentiments and tap the excess powder of my paper. I'm going to preheat my embossing gun for about 10 seconds until it reaches its maximum temperature. Then I'll heat them my sentiments with heat tool until they are completely melted. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiments into a thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. Then I'll be mounting the sentiment banner on the card front using thread foam tape to give some dimension. It's always hard to choose the right sentiment for my card. But having several sentiments is very useful as I can match them with my card design before I decide. I ended up using the sentiment from the World Series Dream Stamp Set. I'm using my T-square ruler to place my sentiment in straight. To finish off my card, I'm going to add some tiny dots on the center of my flowers using Tonic Nouveau Crystal Drops Black. I'm also adding dust around the flowers with a black pen. I almost didn't share this card today as I wasn't happy with how my colored background turned out. So I was going to start it over. But my friend Lia from Pink Press Studio told me that my card is beautiful when I sent her a photo of my card. I know that's so kind of hard to say soon. Since I love her so much, I decided to trust her feedback. And I'm glad I did, because the more I see, the more I love my card. How do you deal with the feeling when you don't like your finished card? Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. This is for today. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye.